You want to be able to control a light from two different locations? Well, that's called a three-way switch, and we're going to get to the bottom of how they work right now. Hi, I'm Steve Schnudy. I'm asked a lot of questions and a lot of them often revolve around three-way switches. They can be confusing and, and complicated. So many wires, what are they? Where are they going? Where are they coming from? Ah, I want to show you what a three-way is, how it works, why it works, how it's wired, some common mistakes that cause problems, and then how you can fix them. And away we go. Here is a light bulb. Recognize it? We want to turn the light bulb on, so we run back to our service panel. We're going to run a wire from the panel, hook it up to a breaker, run it to the light, and then you're going to run a neutral wire back to the panel, and there's a simple circuit. I turn the breaker on, our light goes on because current is now flowing in the circuit. If you want to cause the light bulb to turn off and turn on easily, we throw in a switch, and there it is. And the switch is simply a device that opens and closes and makes and breaks the circuit. You've got, you see you got two points there, the two little dots, those are contact points. Right now the switch is open, kind of like an open drawbridge. Current can't flow across that, so that's why the light is off. If I close the switch, now current can flow, right? Piece of cake. But we want to talk about three-way switches. So you want to be able to control that light from not just one location, but two locations. How does that work? Well, why don't we just throw another switch in there? Isn't that kind of what we want? We'll take a close look at that and you'll see a problem develop. Let's operate the switch on the left and what's the deal? No light. The light's not going to work until both of them are closed. You don't want to have to run up and down the stairs every time, make sure both switches are closed. So this isn't what we're looking for. We need to toss that. What we need actually is a completely different kind of a switch. All right, we're going to have to modify the thing. So let's start again, All right? Back to the drawing board. Here's our single pole switch. Imagine for a minute that instead of two contacts, we add one like that, and we've got three now. By the way, this is why it's called a three-way switch, because there are three contact points. So look at how this one works. A three-way switch doesn't open and close per se. It just swings back and forth between that set of contacts or that set of contacts. So right now, the switch is making contact with the, the wire hooked up to the bottom contact. If I operate the switch, it swings up this way, and now it's going to the top wire. So one or the other is always connected, but never both at the same time, okay? Throw our panel back in. The black contact is C, we call that common. And then the other two are called T1 and T2, and T stands for traveler. So as I operate the breaker, turn the thing on, you can see that traveler wire on the bottom is energized. The one on the top stays de-energized because it's not made to the common contact. If I operate the switch, I just reverse the situation or the condition. Always one or the other, never both at the same time. That's what a three-way switch does. That's all it does. How does it work? Well, let's go ahead and throw another one in because with three ways, there's always two. And you can see that we've got two of the three wires hooked up to the second three-way switch on the right. The traveler wire coming from the first switch hooks up to the traveler terminal on the second switch, both top and bottom. And that's all they do. So you've got the common wire on the left that's coming from the panel. What does the common wire on the right hook up to? You guessed it. It goes to our load, which is in this case a light bulb. Okay, you're looking at it. Now we're almost done. One more wire. That's right. We got to have our neutral wire. Nothing works without that. And now you are looking at a complete, properly diagrammed three-way circuit. And here is a single pole switch. Notice that there are just the two brass screws. It gets two wires. One of them will be the power wire, and the other wire that you hook up will be our switch leg or load, which goes to the light. With a single pole switch, it doesn't matter which wire goes to which screw, it works either way. So that's a single pole switch. Little dip is the three way switch because now there are actually three terminals. You have two brass, but this odd colored screw down here, a dark colored screw, that is for the common wire. Remember now a three way switch gets three wires, two travelers, one common. That common wire always goes to the dark colored screw. I usually put that on first just to make sure I get that one right and it's out of the way because the two 
traveler wires, they can go either way. You can put the red one there and the black one there. You can put the red one here, the black one there. The switch doesn't care. As long as you have traveler wires on the brass and a common wire on the dark colored screw, you can't miss. Now if you opened up your walls and took the drywall off, you wouldn't see this. I'm just showing it to you in sort of schematic form. Now let's say we turn that breaker on and see what happens. Does the light turn on or does the light stay off? Well the light has to stay off, doesn't it? Because the common on the left takes power, energizes the traveler wire on the, on the bottom, T2. But if you follow that down to the second switch, it's not connected through because of the way the switch is positioned so the light can't turn on. So. If I operate the switch on the right, look what happens. The light goes on because you've just provided a path for that hot traveler wire to the light bulb. If I run down the other end of the hall and operate the switch on the left, the light goes off because I've just denied that, that traveler wire the power and, and diverted it to the other traveler wire. Operate the switch on the right, it will let the light go on because every time you do this, you're, you're flip-flopping the travelers and causing one to be energized and the other to not be energized and that is why or how the silly thing works. This is the basis for understanding how to hook them up and how to figure out when something's going wrong because all you need to be able to do is identify in the switch box which wire is a traveler, which wire is the other traveler, and which wire is a common and make sure they're hooked up to the proper place on each switches and you can usually troubleshoot a bad three-way within just a few minutes. All right, so moving along here, you're asking the question, why doesn't my three-way switch work? So what I wanna do is show you how to hook up a three-way switch improperly. That's right, we're gonna do it wrong right here while you're all watching. Once in a while, someone's in a hurry, not paying attention, they actually flop a couple of wires and they hook them to the wrong thing. Like for example, look at that hot wire on the left coming from the panel. It's supposed to hook up to the common or black screw on the switch, but what happens if by mistake, you actually hook it to one of the brass screws on that switch, that should be a traveler. And conversely, you accidentally hook up the traveler wire to the common terminal. So what's gonna happen now when I turn that breaker on? Well, if you guess nothing happens, you are correct because all I did was I energized a traveler terminal on the switch, which isn't going anywhere, so nothing happens. But you don't know that there's anything wrong yet. You row over here and you operate the switch on the left, and what do you know, the light went on. So you think you're doing good. So, you know, it worked because current has a path, not because you hooked it up right. So you're thinking, all right, so you run down to the other end and you operate that switch. Watch this now. And sure enough, the light goes off just like it's supposed to, and you're feeling pretty good. Like, I think I nailed this, but we'll check again. We'll run down to the first switch, operate that. The light should go on, and uh-oh, the light doesn't go on. We're back to the, what we started with, aren't we? And now you know you've got a problem. And this, by the way, is when you're checking a three-way circuit that you have just hooked up. Don't be satisfied with just throwing one of those switches and having the light go on. It doesn't necessarily mean you did it right. Run down to the other one, operate that one, make sure things happen. Then run back to the first one, operate it again. Make sure everything acts the way it should, no matter what position the switch is in. If you hooked it up wrong, you're gonna find out pretty quick, all right? So that's it. That's how a three-way switch works in theory and in practice. Once you understand what you're dealing with and what you're looking at, it's not that hard to hook them up or fix a problem or maybe switch out old, old devices for new ones. So I hope this was helpful for you. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me. And I do appreciate you watching. See ya.